This video will be your guide to understanding whether you need a daily planner application, a to-do list app, or a calendar application. And we're gonna give you real in-depth advice in which one is best suited for you. So welcome, if you're new here and you are not subscribed to the newsletter yet, you can dive into Tool Digest, which digs into new productivity apps and also digs into the ones that are out on the market and which one is best for you. So if you're not subscribed to that, do link below. All of the apps in this video in the picture is I will be linked in the description below. I always get that. Uh, make sure you include what they are. It's a nightmare trying to reply to comments. So my name is Francesco and I've been looking at productivity tools for 10 years now, over 10 years, probably like 15 years. And uh, I've really seen too many apps in my time. And one of the things that's really, really hard now um, is something called categorization because Categorization it allows me to go, that's a note-taking application and that's a to-do list application and allow me to find the perfect one for people. But the blinds are getting blurred and it definitely in the last couple of weeks or last couple of months has definitely been very prevalent. So I want to take you through a little bit of a guide in finding the perfect daily planner app and really looking to see whether you need one or not. So let's look at a graph. This is something I posted on Twitter, and this is why uh, I'm doing this video, because it stemmed a lot of conversation around whether I need or, or whether you need a daily planner app. And these ones in the middle are what I define as daily planner apps. They are 50% task apps and 50% calendar apps. And what they do very well is allow you to plan, manage tasks, and bring them into your calendar, but the calendar functionality is as good as a typical calendar application. Uh, maybe a little bit watered down, but at the same time, you're managing two core experiences, and that's why they're a hybrid application. That's why they typically come at a higher price, because you're combining a sole calendar app and a sole task management app. And we've seen apps like um, Sansama, uh, Akiflow, Motion, that are all typical daily planner apps, and there are more and more coming to the market. And then we have calendar apps, which are like Notion Calendar, Rise Calendar, uh, Fantastical. Um, and they are calendar apps that allow you to manage your calendar very simply. Um, and the same with to do list applications, Google Tasks, AnyDo, even though that does have a calendar aspects, and Microsoft To Do. But what is happening at the moment? is task management applications are adding calendar abilities at a rapid rate of knots, and calendar apps are adding task abilities at a rapid rate of knots. So there's sort of like an intersect where a lot of them are starting to become daily planner apps um, and charging maybe a little bit more or condensing their experience a lot further than they have before or widening the net, which a lot of people like to call it. And here's a good example. Uh, Morgan and Amy are both applications that have task management abilities in their calendar app. Now, I wouldn't say the task management abilities are good enough to call it a daily planner, but they do have good abilities in there. Maybe 25 to 35% of the experience is task related and the rest is well calendar produced but nothing to the standard, at least they're heading towards, nothing to standard at the moment of Aki Flow in Motion. And that's the reasoning behind why I don't call them daily planner apps yet. Um, whilst I think Morgan and Amy are heading that way, I also know that Todoist is heading that way as well, introducing a calendar function, uh, allowing you to connect to a Google Calendar and actually dragging stuff into your, and, and start time boxing. So I think the actual process of uh, task management apps and calendar apps are weaving towards daily planner applications. And that's why it's very difficult to be able to establish um, all the time um, an idea of whether something is a to-do this application because things are slowly trying to merge into one place. And that's the reasons why it's quite a difficult conversation. So you may have come to this video trying to understand, do I need to move from a task or a calendar app to a daily planner app? And um, the typical advice I tend to go with is that if you are somebody 
that is struggling with their task management and you are a visual person, then a daily planner app is worth looking at because those people that are visually natured, that like to see their time blocked in a calendar um, and that use a task app at the same time, if you merge those two concepts, then you're looking at um, something that is super similar to what a daily planner is aimed for. Daily planner apps are typically more expensive. Look at apps like AkiFlow and Motion. They both have equal pricing now at $19 a month billed annually. So you're going to paying in excess of 200 bucks per year to get access to these type of applications. Sunsama is also another one that while slightly lower than 200 bucks, still comes in very close to 200 bucks. So at the same time, the, um, the definite increase in pricing is there. Um, I think we're going to see this across the board. Todoist is priced at $5 per month, um, $4 if you build it annually, which is dramatically less. But I think um, in the future that Todoist Pro will probably be being priced between $7.50 and $10 because of that daily planner functionality that they're beginning to weave into their system. So to look at this, you need to be pretty sure that the daily planner application is right for you because you're going to be spending upwards of 60 to 70% more for your application than you were before. But then that's how, that's, there's that consideration to bring in that am I, am I spending that amount with a calendar app? For example, if I had Todoist and uh, Fantastical and I'm paying five bucks per month for Fantastical, five bucks per month for Todoist, maybe the increase in price and um, the, the approach is actually a lot less. I'm paying 10 bucks now, what's another nine? Some people might be thinking like that, but it's really important that you establish a good metric for this for you. Now, there's also that discussion, discussion um, of whether calendar apps are also doing the same thing in terms of adding these abilities um, and the pricing of those. And actually, the pricing of those is getting to the same rate as the, it's not as high as the task management rate. Task management apps like Todoist, AnyDo, and TickTick are typically between $5 and $7.99 at the max, um, what is sort of the range per month. Whereas calendar apps like uh, Vimcal, Amy, uh, Morgan, they're looking at the premium pricing at, some, at, at pricing that's in the 10 to 15 bucks. So calendar apps are also doing the same thing. So we're going to have a very interesting 2024 and 2025 as both of these applications look to merge and, and look to increase pricing because they're offering so much more. Or we might see daily planner apps looking less competitive and reducing their pricing. It's either going to go one of two ways. But I just thought it'd be interesting to discuss whether you need one. If a to-do list app is working well for you and a calendar app is working well for you separately, there's no need to change your system. Um, if you're looking and you're finding it much more difficult to balance the two, then it's worth looking at a daily planner app. Obviously, continue real keeping an eye on that budget aspect. And I hope daily planner applications were explained a little bit further for you. So thank you very much, folks, and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. If you are new here to the channel, please make sure you subscribe and uh, join that newsletter that I mentioned at the start, Tool Digest. So thank you very much, and I'll see you all very soon. Cheerio.